Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm really excited to be doing a little Lest Waste series. I'm just going to be delving into different parts of the home and kind of tackling some of the most common places that we create waste and giving you natural and eco-friendly alternatives. So the first thing that I thought of when trying to reduce waste was actually, and maybe not surprisingly, dish soap. The first thing that you can try is a dish block. The company that I really liked is called No Tox Life, and I've used their dish block before. We used to buy it actually all the time. And it's a really great product because it's very versatile, so you actually don't have to use their dish block just on dishes. You can use it as a like stain treatment on clothes before washing, which I did quite often with my daughter's clothes. So sometimes soaps and especially dish soaps can almost leave like a film on the dishes. We didn't have that problem with hand washing our dishes with the dish blocks. So a dish block is a really great plastic free alternative to everyday liquid dish soap. Now if you're not into the whole dish block thing, you can also try to find a refill station maybe in your area. A lot of times refill stations will have local delivery. Sometimes they're at a pop-up shop at a local farmer's market. So you might have to do a little digging to uncover a refill shop in your, in your area. And if you happen to find one, great. You can refill your soap that way and that's actually how we do it. We actually fill up on about a gallon size of dish soap and then we decant it into our smaller container here in our sink. So it's a pretty seamless trash-free solution. And my third option for dish soap would be to just get a gallon size or as big a size of a container of dish soap as you can. A lot of times the plastic that we purchase does not get recycled, but it is more likely to get recycled if it's in a gallon size container or larger. So those are my three options for less waste dish soap solution. So the second thing that I feel is probably most frequently used in our kitchen are Ziploc bags. How many times do you just reach for a Ziploc, leftover food, reach for a Ziploc, need a snack, grab a Ziploc, going on a trip and want to put something in a Ziploc. I mean, we use Ziplocs for everything. Hear me out. Instead of using a Ziploc, use a reusable container. My daughter had leftover apple slices the other day and instead of putting them in a Ziploc, I put them in a stainless steel container and put it in our fridge. It's that simple. So my next solution, for a Ziploc, and this happens to be my favorite, favorite choice, is using what is called a stasher bag. If you're unfamiliar with a stasher bag, they are essentially a reusable Ziploc bag. They are made of food grade safe silicone. They can be frozen, they can be microwaved, they can be put in the dishwasher. They're extremely versatile. I love stasher bags. I've tried a good handful of different brands of reusable Ziploc bags and honestly nothing has compared to Stasher. I think Stasher bag is kind of like the elite of reusable Ziploc bags. So we keep all of our reusable Ziploc bags in this little uh, cupboard. This, this is their sandwich size bag and it's really cool because they can come in different colors. The other great thing is Stasher has a ton of different size bags. They have like a gallon size bag, half a gallon size sandwich bags, snack bags. They have like little mini bags. I mean, they have any size that you can think of. I do have more food storage solutions. So I do have a, like a video on that. I'll have it linked up in the cards and down in the description box. But I just go a little bit more in depth with some like zero waste food storage alternatives. Okay, so the third thing that I think probably creates the most waste in our kitchens are, can you guess? Paper towels. We actually do not own any paper towels. We haven't purchased paper towels in, I want to say maybe the last three years, which you might be like, how do you manage? Let me tell you. The first way that we have managed living without paper towels is having a designated little area for all of our cleaning rags. So anytime there's a mess, we use our cleaning rags to clean up the mess, be it a food splatter or I'm just wiping down the counters in the kitchen or we're cleaning the oven and it's like, all the kinked on stuff. We use those cleaning rags, we launder them. We've been doing this for years. It's been a perfect solution for our family. The other thing that we do is we have a second or secondary area where we keep cloth napkins. And those napkins we use for meal times. They are exclusively and only for our meal times. They don't get wrapped into our cleaning rags. I like to keep those completely separate because I just think more hygienic and sanitary that way. We also have dish towels. So anytime we're drying up our dishes, 
um, or maybe drying our hands after we wash dishes, we have a dish towel that's out. Those are pretty common. I'm sure you probably have those in your home, but they get a lot of use in ours because we're not using paper towels. So we have cloth napkins for dinner, cleaning rags for cleaning purposes, and dish towels. I love the system that we've had in place. However, I feel like my family may have grown out just using cloth napkins, cleaning rags, and dish towels because we recently adopted a cat and with cat ownership, sometimes you have to clean up well, you know. So the solution that I think we're gonna go with in our family is actually getting bamboo paper towels. The reason why I say bamboo and not just regular paper towels is because paper towels are made from wood pulp and wood pulp is coming from trees. And if you know anything about a tree, you know that it takes a very, 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 very long time for that tree to grow just so that it can be cut down, turned into a paper towel that you can just use one time to you know, dry your hands and throw away. It seems a little absurd. The reason I like bamboo is because it's such a renewable resource. Bamboo, I believe, is in the grass family, so it grows so fast, which means that even if you're chopping it down and getting your paper goods from it, it's gonna grow back quickly unlike a tree where if you chop it down, it's pretty much done for. And now you know all the solutions that you could potentially try instead of just using regular paper towels. And I really do hope that you, as much as possible, just try to go paper free in your kitchen and then incorporate bamboo paper towels when needed. Okay, so the fourth thing that I think a lot of us use in our home, it's very just common, we don't even think about it, it's how we grew up, is sponges. A lot of sponges that are found in homes are actually made out of plastic, which you know anything about plastic it doesn't actually biodegrade which is not good for the environment so you want to use natural materials that once at the end of its life it can either be composted or in the very least if it's going to get thrown into landfill it can hopefully biodegrade so what we traditionally use in our home are these really beautiful wooden dish brushes they are compostable at the end of their life the brush bristles themselves are made of a natural material i need to check to see what they're actually made of but everything is completely natural it's funny because we've been using these for years and i recently went over to my parents house and was using just like their regular sponge and i just couldn't believe how much more difficult it was to wash the dishes so i love that they are efficient and i also love that they are aesthetically beautiful in our little kitchen i have a couple of different products that we enjoy listed down in the description box number five this is the big kahuna the one that my mother-in-law actually and i were talking about like this um over the, the holiday and she was asking, you know, what are some good alternatives for aluminum foil? And I was like, oh, that is a really good one. Because I have to admit, aluminum foil is pretty versatile. It's a very versatile product and it's very inexpensive. And I can see why people defer to it. It makes sense. The first way that I've seen aluminum foil be used is just to like wrap um, maybe leftovers, like a leftover pizza or something. What I would do instead is use those stasher bags that I mentioned earlier. Just put your pizza slices in there, bada bing, bada boom, you're done. You can microwave your pizza slices inside your stasher bag. That's something you can't do with aluminum foil, so keep that in mind. Now let's say you're using aluminum foil to bake something or cook some food. I would recommend using uh, reusable baking sheets. Da -da -da! So this is what it looks like. It's made of that silicone material, same material as these stasher bags. And you can put this on your baking sheet if you're making cookies or, I don't know, cooking up some chicken or whatever it may be, you can reuse and reuse and reuse these. Now let's say you like to grill with aluminum foil. You like to wrap your veggies and get that nice grilled, ooh, that makes me like hungry, like a sauteed grill of like zucchinis and onions, yum. First product is a veggie basket. I actually found this on Amazon and I, I myself have not used it, but it seemed to have really great reviews and I thought it was a really great reusable product. It's a grilling vegetable basket. You put your veggies in and then you can stick on your barbecue and just cook up your veggies that way. Now, if you're wanting to cook some meat on the barbecue and you usually use aluminum foil, I found what are called cedar grilling wraps and it kind of gives it that smoky flavor. At least that's what the reviews have said. Um, and it's made of natural materials like cotton. 
Now I know that sounds scary, like I'm putting cotton next to a barbecue or are you crazy? But it's meant for grilling. So I'll also have that link down below. You guys can read the description and the um, reviews of it and see if that's something that you could potentially try instead of using aluminum. The sixth thing that I wanna mention to you is, can you believe it? Plastic gallon water containers. Plastic gallon container, plastic water gallon containers? What the hell are they called? The sixth thing, gallon sized water container. I know my family does it. I know lots of families do this. You just buy like those big gallons of water for a couple of bucks and you drink out of them because it probably tastes better than your tap water. I know for me and the area that we live in, we live in LA, tap water does not taste that great. It's not our preference. Invest in some type of filter. I've recommended something as simple as a Brita filter. I don't feel like it does the best job filtering, but it's better than nothing. Second thing that is a really cool zero waste filter, and it's also very affordable, at least in my opinion, comparable to a Brita filter. Something called charcoal water filters. It's actually a Japanese method of filtering water, and it's made out of wood that has been burnt literally almost to a crisp, so it's like a charcoal and you stick it in your water containers and it absorbs different toxins. After you're done using these charcoal water filters, I think they last for about six months, depending on how frequently you use them. Um, you can compost them and they're of the earth, so they hopefully would biodegrade in time. It's not like a big giant um, like plastic brittle water filter. And this is what we personally do in our home, is we use a Berkey water filter. There she is. Berkey water filters I feel are a just an elite filtering system and by the time we drink it it tastes amazing. If we just drink directly from our tap water it does not taste good at all. Those are my three alternatives to saying goodbye to those plastic gallon water and my cat is meowing. You want to say hi to everybody on the YouTube? Hello. So anyways, thank you so much for watching you guys. I really appreciate it. And if you like this content, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe, especially if you're interested in this less waste, less waste content, um, as I will be making it a series and going to different parts of our home and trying to find alternatives to create less waste. Um, zero waste is not about being perfectly zero waste. It's about all of us making small, actionable steps so that we can reduce our overall waste. Um, and footprint on our beautiful planet Earth. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next week. I'm sorry if you were distracted by my cat. Oh, don't. <laughs> Bye guys. Mm -hmm.